Welcome to the Friday edition, the first edition, there's going to be another edition, of Anglican Unscripted, episode 369. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm Gavin Ashenden, and it's the 9th of February. Any particular year? Oh yes, 2018! <laughs> Okay, Gavin, over in England, and I thought I'd get an update from you. Uh, the Church of England uh, Senate is going on this week. I think it's finishing up. Pretty, it's probably finished because you guys are on England time, not uh, Eastern time. And <laughs> we are. Uh, I think there's three uh, things that you and I want to talk about. They, they talked about uh, Freemasonry. They talked about uh, Bishop Bell, kind of. They stalled on it, and they talked about whether or not to bring the Methodists back, to let them back in the, uh, into the band. Mm. And so, uh, let's get started. First of all, how is your week going? Um, my week's going very well. I did go down to London. I, I gave a talk in, in a very, quite a, a famous and lovely church called St. Michael's Chester Square. Um, and uh, they asked me to come and speak on prayer, which was terrifying. Mm. Because it, it's a bit like going into a restaurant and lecturing people on how to eat. They're eating. That's what they've come to do. And, and, you know, they've been eating a long time. So to talk on prayer, um, uh, especially to a, to, at a very famous evangelical church, was quite daunting. Um, and uh, what was even more daunting was the discovery that, that it was recorded and put up as a podcast before I'd even got my coat and left the building. <laughs> Welcome to 2018. Check. That's what it's like. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I... I, I um, so that was fine. <clears throat> I had some meetings with some other people and, and they were all very interesting. And then I came home. And in the meantime, I kept on watching General Synod. I, I, I wondered if I should go and sit in the gallery. And so I took advice and um, the, uh, the, the source of all my good advice said to me, it would be tacky don't do it so i watched it online instead and i think it would have been tacky i think i was there five years ago maybe six years ago and yes people go well what's he doing here what's anglican tv what's they do the, gal the gallery is like, it's almost like the reverse the gallery is almost like an upper stage yeah. and, and you can know you can be seen immediately and um so it, it's a place of it's it, it's theater and you should only walk on stage if there's a very good reason for it. <laughs> it is theater uh, of the strangest kind. And uh, if you guys ever get a chance, just watch. They don't do the close-ups of the sleeping bishops anymore. Uh, basically, <laughs> you, you, you get more of a wide shot. On the left, though, uh, yes? There was, there was, there was a... There yes? Was a, <laughs> I can't say. There was a clergy person. I won't say what sex he or she was. And he or she was sitting behind the speaker and and it was one of those awful moments when he or she began to ex or oh, I won't even say what race they were began to explore all those facial bits that you kind of feel aren't quite and you know, and they had no idea the camera was on them and, and for sort of 10 very painful minutes <laughs> yeah, every bit of this facial exploration <laughs> And it's, it's, it's no one's fault. We all do it. I mean, no, it, we, it, it could happen to any of us. But but in terms of of um, of, of standard protocol and and, and uh, TV, the dangers of being on TV. It was. I, I just. I wanted to. I, I wished I'd had this person's Text telephone number. <laughs> Wake up. Even your nose alone. <laughs> <laughs> You're on TV. Oh God, you're drooling! <laughs> yeah, I know it's. <laughs> well, it's a drooling and dribbling. I want people to tell me about when it happens, please. <laughs> All right, we want to get on topic here, yeah. But uh, but you see the expressions on our face, the joy we talk about with General Synod. Yeah, it is that bad. Uh, okay, they talked about Freemasons. What was the topic? Well, we're compensating, Kevin, because mm -hmm. the three things we're talking about are really quite difficult and. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I found, I found disturbingly sad, really. And and I think I want to say to, to all our listeners, we're, we're not looking for things to criticize the Church of England over. We really aren't. But these three things are, are, are difficult. Like Kevin, leave your nose alone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 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 uh, tell me the same. It's, yes. It's, you know. um, the Freemasonry thing is is important. Um, if anyone has studied Freemasonry, uh, understands its history, its theology, its politics, they, they'll know that uh, it has nothing to do with Christianity. And 
uh, it, its theology at the heart of it um, is, is enormously problematic. They'll also know that it has two levels. Uh, it has a kind of superficial uh, activist level where people just get together and do nice things. And I know nice Freemasons who have nice meetings and they do charitable and kindly things. But, but there is a, a, a secrecy portal through which you go. And as you go through this portal, it moves from being a social club to being a rather serious religious organization that exercises secret power. Now, if you have any sense of spiritual discernment or spiritual warfare, um, Freemasonry represents a very serious disturbance in the in the struggle between between the kingdom of heaven and the other stuff. So one needs to decide, is one talking about it as a charity that raises money? Is one talking about it metaphysically as a as something that, that um, if it's undealt with within Christianity, acts as some kind of toxic source? Or are we dealing with something that exercises hidden pressure in the, in the appointments of people and then and, and, and getting people contracts or, uh, or, or positions? Uh, but the fact is that last year was the 300th anniversary of Freemasonry in Great Britain, and there was a rash of services for Freemasons throughout the country in the big cathedrals. Uh, in Canterbury, uh, they asked for an even song, and it was an even song to give thanks for the 300th anniversary. Uh, they paid for it by giving £300,000 to the cathedral's uh, appeal. Um, that ought to cause some people some kind of concern. Well, that's a good deal. It's not like they do any Christian things there. Um, 300K, well, huh? Uh, wow. uh, so somebody asked a question in Synod, knowing that this had happened, saying, how much money did the Freemasons give the Church of England, and how many services did they buy, and in which cathedrals? Uh, and, and someone stood up in, in General Synod and said, you'll hear this again with George Bell. They said, we don't know, and we're not going to tell you. <laughs> so, uh, in as such, by closing down in communication and just saying the people on the inside get to know that number, they're becoming their own sect as well. Uh, you know, we have to have open communication. Nobody's above reproach. I think one of the problems is that in 1987, the Church of England commissioned a report. Um, now, for people who feel Rowan Williams gets, gets a tough deal uh, from some commentators, Rowan was very, very anti-Freemasonry. Uh, and But in, before Rowan became... Uh, a druid. <laughs> Archbishop of Kent. I nearly said Prime Minister. Thank you for watching too much television. <laughs> Poor Rowan. We can't record on Fridays. We're just too silly. Yeah, you know, he became a well, druid. You know, <laughs> one. So we're talking again. I'm sorry. Some people wonderfully call Rowan, Rowan Atkinson. And it was, of course, somebody else. Okay, so this is not Rowan Atkinson. He wasn't prime minister. He didn't become a druid, um, though, though he 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 did engage in in Welsh cultural festivals. Rowan was very much against Freemasonry, and in 1987 there was an official report that said Freemasonry is seriously problematic. Thing, ask not for whom the bell tolls it's turning to the Church of England and uh, and some more work should be done in looking into quite how dangerous and how serious it is uh, and you may say to yourself well how much work was done since 1987 this, this report and the answer is none whatsoever wow. so um, it's for that reason I suppose that, that, that the Church of England or General Synod feels it doesn't have to be accountable. Um, we we haven't kept a record of, we haven't asked the cathedrals, we're not going to tell you what the answer is. But the fact is that, that Freemasons uh, came to the church, the cathedrals of the, of the Church of England and they paid a lot of money uh, and they bought services. Uh, they used Anglican liturgy, they weren't Masonic rituals. Um, and they celebrated, they celebrated Freemasonry in everything it stands for. Um, and that ought to have made some people uncomfortable uh, and, and much more uncomfortable than they appeared to, to seem to be. When they do stuff like this, there should be some accountability, uh, especially the, the fiscal. They, they, how much did you make? You know, 50 million. Well, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm just speaking <laughs> on, on behalf of the Church of England. Clearly, they can be bought. Uh, Bishop Bell, you and I have been talking about uh, George Bell now, uh, almost uh, 18 months. 
uh, on and off as the news appears. There was going to be talk about bringing this up at Synod. Uh, was it brought up? It was It was certainly brought up. Mm -hmm. Today, the, the, the London Times published uh, a, a very hard-hitting article um, uh, um, call, calling the Church of England to account for uh, its abuse of Bell and its, and its failure of process. The Roman Catholic Church has begun to speak out and say, uh, you don't own Bell yourselves. <clears throat> um, the whole church owns him because he was an ecumenist mm -hmm. trying to draw the church together. Uh, and, and behaving as badly as you have been affects us too, so stop it. Um, and one of the reasons why uh, the conspiracy theorists amongst whom I count myself on this occasion think that they released this extra news we can't tell you about, and we're telling the police about it too, despite the fact that this is to do with a dead man who died in 1958 and the police haven't got enough to do, <clears throat> is precisely so that they could stonewall um, at, that's not the right word, is it? What, what, stall. Um, stall. St stall. Stall will do. Yeah. Um, at Synod, and they did, they just stalled and said, we can't tell you, we're not going to tell you, we can't tell you. So, um, and I have, to, I've seen the past sin questions at General Synod are a kind of game between the foot soldiers of the committees and the people who run the place. And it's a sort of, there's an element of fun to it as they try, the question is try and catch the establishment out and the establishment use a few well honed techniques to, to stall. On this occasion, there was an element of threat, I thought. Threat that comes partly because this is about safeguarding and it's really very serious and it's dealing with abuse. Um, there were some angry people who wanted to hold the church to account and uh, the, the atmosphere was really, really, I, found, I thought, very problematic. It's a tough subject. Uh, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, uh, all those things uh, have really uh, tore at the church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, the Anglican Church when they've discovered, oh, we do it too. Um, you know, there's this, this tearing, but there's also overreaction. And, mm. uh, you know, sometimes <clears throat> the overreaction is just as dangerous as the spiritual abuse itself. Um, well, because the overreaction is not dealing with the abuse. It's, it's, it's attempting to, um, I mean, in, in the case of George Bell, it appears to be trying to buy the church credit mm -hmm. for, uh, f uh, to compensate for its previous failures. But the only way to buy yourself credit is to sharpen your act up today. You don't buy it by choosing a uh, essentially what looks like a false target. Um, and I think that's the difficulty. It, it, it's not actually dealing with integrity by cleaning your act up now, which is all you can do. Yeah, I, I think here in America, I don't know if I in the 90s, there's a cardinal in uh, Chicago that was uh, falsely accused. Uh, very public. Uh, everybody assumed, okay, this uh, gentleman has accused you. You're obviously guilty. And he was alive and able to deal with it. Um, mm. And he dealt with it. said, these are allegations. First of all, I pray for this person. These allegations uh, are false. Uh, I don't remember meeting with him. And over the period of time, uh, it came out this this guy did have false memories. Uh, he was being treated by a psychiatrist. He had never met uh, the cardinal. Um, but the man was alive to defend himself in the case of bell you you're just picking at whatever straws will will break the camel's back here in order to make yourself as a church look good and it, and it's not an isolated case i mean the, your uh, people will remember edward heath who was a prime minister he was a single yeah, man uh and and one source a guy called nick has brought allegations against Edward Heath, and the police have spent a great deal of money, assuming he was guilty, um, and for years have been running this, um, you know, this campaign. If we if we tell you this often enough times, somebody else will come out of the woodwork and corroborate yeah. it. Nobody did. It's almost certainly a false allegation, and it's just a shame. I think that the church can't do better. And secular society when it comes to um, to dealing with abuse and also the responsibility for the reputation of dead people. Catholics are right. Th this affects everybody. Okay, we need to talk about the Methodists. We don't need to talk right. about Methodist history, but 
The, the topic du, du jour is whether to bring them back into the Anglican fold where we can uh, co-celebrate, co-love, um, and uh, be ecumenical once again. And to a certain extent, that's already existed for at least the last 10 years. I, they just want to make it official. I don't know. What did you learn by watching the discussion of Methodists? Well, there's good news and bad news. <clears throat> I mean, the good news is the Church of England and the Methodists are going to draw much closer together. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that that is excellent. Um, the, the, the bad news is that the things that have kept them apart are, are not being dealt with, they're not being looked at. So, you know, what's keeping them apart? Well, an understanding of presbytership, an understanding of what the Eucharist is, an understanding of the role of bishops, an understanding of apostolic succession. If these things don't matter, then it's very good news because you have two liberal Protestant organizations that are that are going to cooperate together mm -hmm. but if you do think those things matter then, then it's problematic i think one of the reasons i found it difficult is because um i'm i'm glad to be an anglican i, I think i think anglicanism brings a great gift to the church because it combines together places where the holy spirit has been really active so in the sacramental side of the church and the anglo-catholic side of the church there's there's a, a great depth of sacramental gift where jesus comes to you you, you cannot you cannot treat lightly any tradition of the church that brings Jesus to you. In the evangelical part of the church, Jesus comes to you through the scriptures. It's very powerful. In the charismatic part of the church, uh, the Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit. It's, it's really great, which is why the Anglican church should be fully sacramental, Catholic, fully evangelical and fully charismatic. My concern with listening to this debate was, where, where were the Anglo-Catholics? Where were the sacramentalists? Maybe they've all left the Church of England or or they, they're too demoralized to speak up. There wasn't a single voice that said, but you're not actually dealing with the issues that keep Methodists and Anglicans apart. Um, and that, that, that was a, a great surprise to me. Um, I, on the good side, there was a, an immense amount of goodwill and a desire to bring two organizations together. But a number of people said that, that whatever happens, there are, uh, there are undealt with issues here that we're we're not looking at and the law of unintended consequences may cause us trouble later on i think one of the things i found quite difficult was at the very end the archbishop of canterbury said uh if you don't vote for this you're being disobedient to the word and the spirit oh and, okay we just <laughs> talked about spiritual abuse has there been no training in the church of england on spiritual abuse that is the very definition of spiritual the, the, abuse oh my lord Arch, Arch, archbishop a number of us who are, who are watching the thing live um you know there's a certain amount of tweeting going on which is usually very good humored and, and quite good fun uh, but adrian hilton uh, one of the one of the most um, powerful and uh, astute commentators on anglican affairs in this country immediately tweeted uh so two bishops and 23 clergy that was the numbers who voted against it are disobedient both to word and spirit. Gosh, gosh is a very polite word. Yeah, it, yes. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I've heard you um, English go rogue, and yeah, that's pretty nice. <laughs> so that was a pretty, that, that was a, I mean, I, I think I simply stopped and my jaw hit the ground and I said that was very heavy. That wasn't that awful word appropriate. Yeah. Um, and and actually, I you know that is controlling. Uh, this was a debate, for goodness sake. Yeah. You might say, well, it was an attempt by the church to discern matters. Um, that no, that's no different than saying God told me to tell you to vote for this. It's I pretty mean, close. To that. I mean, the the implications here, especially as a leader of the Anglican Communion and the Church of England. Um, now, I let's finish up here. We're going to go over time. Uh, here's a great chance to take a, a break. Please donate likes. Uh, click the like on the on the Facebook page you're on. Uh, click like on the YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, go to our YouTube channel. Click subscribe. Donate money. We're going to uh, get the whole team and go to uh, GAFCON 3 in Jerusalem. I'm going to be bringing Gavin. I'm going to be bringing George, my equipment. Uh, and uh, that's going to cost a, a bucket load of money that uh, we don't have. So go to anglican.inc forward slash donate and give what you got. Uh, 
at this point, just give what you don't got because uh, we need your your money to help get there. Um, I saw an interesting uh, uh, story that uh, Archbishop Welby says his successor should be chosen differently. And uh, I don't know if you, you caught that at all. And mm, we, I did we, see that, We yes. could talk about that because <clears throat> that is actually good news out of um, this weekend. And I thought, uh, um, I don't care if we take another 20 minutes to talk about it, but uh, up until now, uh, archbishops and bishops in the Church of England are chosen by a small select committee and okayed by the Queen. Uh, can that be done differently? Uh, it's certainly the wish of the Archbishop. The thing is, Kevin, it's about the hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, uh, well, not at the moment, for some time now, uh, worldwide Anglicans have been saying, uh, what is the role of the Archbishop of Canterbury with Anglican Communion? Essentially, it's historic. He's primus inter pares. Um, I think it was Akinola who famously said, we don't have to go via Canterbury uh, in, in all matters. Um, and GAFCON represents a reflection on, on different configurations of the Anglican Communion, because there's great fissure that's dividing up between those who want to keep orthodox biblical faith and those who are more attuned to the spirit of the age. So what the Archbishop of Canterbury was really doing was extending the members of the committee who will choose the next one by bringing in people, uh, prim primates or archbishops or representatives from the Anglican Communion, essentially to to, to justify his his role uh, as as the the person who's in control or at the head of it. This must be to this. This is intended to forestall the kind of conversations that say, um, "What is the Anglican Communion?" what's the role of the Archbishop of Canterbury and to whom is he accountable? Mm -hmm. So one level, it looks more democratic and more representative. And, 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 and if that's all there is to it, it would be a good thing. Uh, I, I thought it was something of a power play in order to cement control of the Anglican Communion in the hands of whoever occupies the, the See of Canterbury. Yeah, or can Canterbury itself, the See of Canterbury, um, be separate from the Communion as respect to leadership and just have the primates pick ahead when they have a primates meeting uh, for the next term, uh, so-and-so is the uh, the chief among chiefs. Yes, this, it's uh, absolutely the primates could certainly say to themselves, you know, as Methodists do, if we're going to talk about the virtues and charisms of different churches, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things Methodists do is they're very cherry about uh, giving people power for overextended periods of time. And so the presidents of the Methodist, Methodist Conference come and go with quite some regularity. Um, so perhaps if, if uh, Anglicanism really wants to learn from Methodism, it might decide that there should be some kind of revolving chairmanship for, uh, for the Anglican Communion. But that's not the intention of the Archbishop of Canterbury, and that wasn't the intention of bringing in wider representational role. Yeah, but we have done ourselves justice. Hopefully, we glorified God in the process. Um, we redeemed a funny uh, uh, Friday show, and I really appreciate that. Please don't forget to donate likes and uh, donate. Uh, I made that little dollar sign there. Uh, if you want to donate pounds, doesn't matter. I'll, we'll take pounds as well. Uh, just be sure to go to anglicaninc forward slash donate as we raise money for GAFCON. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. It's wonderful that it's Friday and you've been listening to episode 369 of Anglican Unscripted. Show people how you know that. <laughs> that was I memorized awesome. it as well. It was also in my memory. <laughs>